Okay guys, Big Slick here and today we're going to talk about a repair of the Epson Perfection 4180 photo flatbed scanner. Let's take a look. I picked this scanner up at a local thrift store and it only cost a dollar. And as soon as I got it home I knew why it only cost a dollar. These scanners have a common problem where the tension wheel uh, breaks. It was a very cheap, poor design by Epson. Quite honestly, it was sad and pathetic that they designed these scanners this way. But fortunately, it's a reasonably easy repair for anybody with basic competence. I'll take it apart and show you what I did. Okay, to pull this scanner apart, all you have to do is there's a screw in here, a screw in here, and then it latches at the front and you just slide this assembly over. I'll show you that right now. You just kind of give it a little lift and slide. Okay, there you go. And now we're easily inside the unit. So what are we looking at? There is a tensioner assembly right here that I'm showing with the camera. This assembly was held very cheaply by these plastic tabs. This one was intact, but this one busted off this side. And then this tensioner flops upward and tends to wiggle around or actually completely start rattling around in here and then it can actually do some damage. But often it'll partially stay in place, but not enough to keep the belt properly tensioned. So the easiest way to fix this in my opinion, and you may see other opinions on this, is to put it back in its natural position. This is spring-loaded right here. So there's a lot of tension on this unit. That's another reason why these cheap plastic tabs had no prayer of holding this assembly in place. So what I do is I just put it back into its natural position so that it's keeping the belt nice and tensioned. And then I'll just hold it down with a finger and with my other hand I will drill a hole in this side and this side all the way through the case. The bottom of the case of the scanner. And then what you can do... I. You could use small screws, but I actually prefer zip ties for a reason that they allow a little bit of wiggle room without like cranking it down tight. So it's a little bit, in my opinion, the best of both worlds. And what I do on these, since you can't actually loop an electrical tie all the way around, what I do is I slide one of the ties down through and then if I pick it up you'll see that the electrical tie is right there and then I loop it back up through the other end and then what I do is I take a second electrical tie and just use the fastener part of it and slide that down and just use it like you would a nut and bolt so, and I just, just snip off the fastener itself. The entire second tie I just cut and throw away. I just use the head part. And then you can slide that down and you can snug it as tight as you want it. I just leave it just, just a hair bit loose. I mean barely nothing. I mean tight without cranking it down basically. And it's as simple as that. You put it back together while you're in there you're definitely going to want to clean the glass and once you clean the glass you're golden these things will last a while you may eventually need to replace this bulb these bulbs are readily available anywhere from about ten to fifteen dollars if you do replace the bulb and you fix the tensioner, you largely have what is going to be the equivalent of a brand new unit because otherwise these things are built well. And if they haven't been used much, the bulb will still be in pretty good shape too. But with the bulbs turning on and off like that, like any fluorescent light, 
they will tend to go bad and get dim and the more dim they get eventually they'll quit working and as they dim the scans will not be quite as good a quality so there it is we'll put it back together and load the drivers and we'll see how the scan looks okay we installed the drivers and you can see that it pulls up under the scanners and cameras part of the control panel and also you can use it from the Epson scan utility so we will just double click that we'll just scan it in full auto mode to make this simple for the demonstration so what will we scan of course we will scan big slick put it down and we will hit scan we'll just go with the default Okay, there we go there. Bingo, so this will apparently be, uh, looks like image two. And there you go, a beautiful scan just using the default settings of Ace King. The advantage of these old Perfection Epson scanners are that they st actually still have drivers all the way that are compatible up to Windows 10, both 32 and 64-bit versions. So regardless of whether you're still running XP, Vista, Windows 7, Windows 8, Windows 8.1, or Windows 10, you have a driver available to you. Now the one thing I will say is that I do have a problem on this laptop and this is a fresh XP SP3 install that when I install these Epson drivers the boot up is substantially slower and I'm not actually sure why that is but it's definitely these drivers because when I do a rollback everything's fine so I don't know maybe you're gonna to have to put up with a boot delay but I don't see any noticeable problem using the machine it seems to be strictly a boot issue okay guys I'm back here with another tip that I just said that I was getting slow boot up times with this Epson scanner drivers so the solution is that well first I'll explain the problem the problem is if you look at the uh, event logs on boot up the Windows Image Acquisition Service the WIA service it's basically crashing immediately on boot or I should say it's hanging on boot and this problem the solution is actually quite simple all you do is set this service to manual it will not affect anything when you double click on the Epson scan interface it'll just smoothly automatically start this WIA service and you'll be good to go you won't know anything different the only thing that'll change is you will be boot up fast just like you normally would and for I have apparently the reason why this hangs on boot if you leave it set to automatic is because these Epson drivers are not signed and validated to be compatible with Windows and they even give you a warning when you install it are you sure that you want to install these they seem to work fine but this apparently is a small bug and as far as I can tell it's never been fixed so you have to set this WIA service to manual 
and everything will work fine. You'll boot up fast and the scanner will still work fine whenever you go to use it. It'll just simply start on demand. And when you go back to the event logs, you will find that you don't get an error anymore whenever that starts. Let me see if I can pull the event viewer up very quickly here. I'll show that under system here, if you look since my last boot here, which was at 702, you will see if I go up through the logs here, there's not a single error. So, there's no problem at all here. Everything works great if you make that one change. Hope that helps you out also. Okay, well, that shows you how to repair the uh, tensioner problem that most of these old Epson Perfection scanners have. Very easy to repair. Uh, nice scanners, beautiful quality. Still have drivers available for all, basically all versions of Windows that you're going to use. In fact, there's even drivers available going all the way back to Windows 98. So, pretty much you're completely covered. And if you want a top quality scanner that you shouldn't have to pay almost anything for, most thrift stores that I see have a lot of these available. My guess is that most of them are broken. I've fixed some in the past. I've sold them at flea markets and that. I don't do that as much anymore, but these things are highly recommended if you want a quality scanner to scan in old photos that you've taken in the past with film cameras, or you need to scan documents and you don't need a document feeder, this is outstanding. You're just not going to beat the quality that you're going to get for what these days will be a very small price. When a lot of these scanners came out, I have a 4870 photo also that I picked up for a couple bucks at a thrift store. Uh, a lot of these scanners were all upwards of $250 and a lot of them were up to $400 even slightly above that. So they were pricey units. You're getting quality here. Yeah, they're old but you know, do a few basic repairs and you have a quality piece of gear that will last you a while. So I hope that helps you out. Take care. Bye.